Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about some basic gizmos, or in other words, gizmos that we can use without needing any scripts. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to close my camera, go into build mode, and pull out some of these gizmos that we can play around with without scripts. Go ahead and build mode, pop up my menu. Let's take a look at some of these gizmos. Trigger, can't use it without a script. A door can definitely be used without a script. We'll pull that out and take a look at it. Text gizmos, they, those can be used without a script. We'll take a look at that one. Raycast really can't. Achievements really can't. Scripts really can't be used without scripts. Um, the sound recorder can. We can take a look at that one. Um, the particle effects, they can be used without a script. Uh, projectile launchers cannot. Snap destinations are loud. Spawn points are loud. The environment gizmo is used without script. Can we put scripts on environment gizmos? No, can't even put one on there. Um, trail effects, they can also be used. Uh, the leaderboard and dynamic lights, that's the last thing that can be used without a script. So let's go over these. The door, the text gizmo, the sound recorder, the particle effect, the snap destination, the spawn point, the environment gizmo, the trail effect, and the dynamic lighting. Um, so first we got the door. This one's pretty straightforward. If you put your cursor inside of any of these gizmos and press up on your right controller, you'll get the properties window. We can hold up on the properties option and we can kind of drag that window in front of our face. So the only options that you really have is the ability to change the door. And they just recently allowed us to be able to search for all public worlds so I can add anybody's door here. If, um, let's see, what's a door, what's a popular door that I don't have edit access to? Okay, like the soapstone. Like I can't edit the soapstone, but I can find their door. And now I have a soapstone door in my world. Um, just like any of the other gizmos that we're going to look at today and shapes that we looked at in our last video, you can still change the position, rotation, and scale of, of all of these objects. Uh, but for doors, that's pretty much it. Um, a door can be resized. can be made to stretch in different directions. I don't know what the purpose of stretching it in this direction would be, but you can do it. And that's pretty much it with doors. The next gizmo we want to look at is the text gizmo. So um, there's a lot you can actually do with a text gizmo besides just putting in some text. Uh, we could we could shot size and shape and twist and turn and stretch. Um, you can also turn off auto fit, and you can set like the size of the text manually. I um, mean, you can set whether or not it's visible, it's visible text or not. One last thing I want to say about text gizmos is if you come into the asset library, there is a text asset from Vidu right here. So these are um, some additional ways to format your text gizmo. And I would encourage you to come in here and take a look at these um, and, and get familiar with basically how to use them. So let's take one for example. Uh, one common one that we use right here is line break. We use this a lot. So the same with any of these options that you have. If you were to come in here and say, put in the line break code, which is less than br greater than. Now when I hit enter, it's, it puts my text on a new line. And that's that's what a line break would look like. And that's what any of your um, text are really going to look like um, when you when you start adding formatting to them. So the next one we have is the sound recorder. So um, obviously we can play any sounds it's recorded or we can make a recording 
of our voice. Hello, testing. This is a recording. Hello, testing. This is a recording. I can turn loop on. Hello, testing. This is a recording. Hello, testing. This is a recording. Uh, we can um, set whether or not it's supposed to play when the world starts. We can adjust the volume and we can adjust the pitch um, just to show you what pitch sounds like. Hello, testing. This is a recording. Hello, testing. This is a recording. Let's put a loop on that. Hello, testing. This is a recording. Hello, testing. This is a recording. Hello testing, this is a recording. Hello testing, this is a recording. Hello testing, this is a recording. That's funny. It's kind of fun. All right. <sighs> okay. Sometimes you have these things. There we go. Interface sometimes will fall out of sync with what's actually happening. You saw how I just fixed that, closed it, and reopened it, and I could stop it. Um, also, we can set whether or not this is um, a global um, sound, which means can the entire world hear it? Um, if not, we can set a minimum and maximum distance uh, that people can hear. So if a minimum distance would be at which point the sound, start, the sound volume starts to fall off, and that would be meters away from this object, um, and we can test this if you want to real quick just to show you how this works. I'm going to put up uh, two of these right here. And we're going to use them to um, mark some measurements. I'm going to pull one out this far and then I'm going to pull one out this far. So if we open up the property windows on this one, we can see the Z on this is scaled to nearly a three. So let's just make it an even three. And then it's here, we're at six. Let's just make it an even seven. I'm going to use my snapping that we talked about yesterday. I'm going to make sure that this is lined up with the center of my sound recorder. So I've got one at three meters and I've got one at seven meters. Let's set this to three as our minimum and seven as our maximum. So at three meters, we should start to hear the volume fall off. At seven meters, it should be completely inaudible to us. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit, play it, put a loop on it. So at here, we hear it just fine. And if I pop over here, We can tell it's getting further away. Hello, testing. This is a recording. And if I fall off this block, I can no longer hear it. Hello, testing. Hello, testing. This is a recording. All right, and that's how the minimum and maximum distance works on a sound recorder. Again, it's record or it's playing without the stop button. That's that's great. I wish they'd fix these things. Anyway, that's okay. I mean, it's not a game breaker. You can work around it. The next one we have is particle effects. Um, so you can set these to, again, play on start. So when the world starts, the particle should start playing. We can also set the particle to loop, uh, which means... I guess the default particle effect is a puff of smoke and basically it's just going to continue to puff that smoke uh, repeatedly until we tell it to stop or turn off the looping. You've got some other uh, options here. Well, So there is the poof smoke. It's also default and has its own option which is weird. Uh, spark hit. That's what that looks like. Hit ring. That's what that looks like. You, you can scale this and you can scale um, all of these. I don't know if scaling in a particular angle. Oh, look at that. It does. That's pretty neat. It didn't scale it in that direction, though. It did scale it this way for us. So those are, those are things you can play around with to get different effects that you might be looking for. Let's look at some of the others. You got the hit ring, uh, smoke trail. 
So like a a rocket or something. Let's see, confetti burst. Sparkle AOE. Water spray. Water burst. And I think, not sure. Yeah, they're still affected by gravity. Let's go back to water spray, though. Yeah, see, we're spraying it down as opposed to spraying it up, and then it falls down. Fireworks. Oh, look, looks like that turned upside down. Not really. Okay. I think the fireworks need some more oomph. They're kind of looking laxed or lazy. Magic build up. I like this one. Especially for teleporting and stuff. It's pretty cool. Kind of like a Star Trek feel. Oh, wait. I missed. Did I miss one? Magic collapse and then magic build up. This is magic build up. That was magic collapse we were looking at. And the vertical lines. Of course, you can. Another good teleporting effect. All right, that's that. Um, snap destination. Probably one of the earliest gizmos. This only really works for people that are teleporting. If you've got teleport turned on um, and they land on a snap destination, they'll be kind of fixed to this spot in their teleporting. Um, and the only option it has is whether or not you want to apply rotation or orientation. Uh, basically, so if someone teleports here, it's going to rotate them to the um, orientation of the snap destination. You can turn it off and then it'll, it won't orientate them at all. And that's, that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot to, to this if you want to force your, your, um, your teleporting players to a specific position. Uh, that's what that's for. Your spawn gizmo. We've kind of looked at this a little bit already in some of the other videos, but we'll talk about the uh, behavior here. Uh, so this sets whether or not a spawn point is designed to um, spawn in new players that join the world. If you turn it off, then um, you would have, the only way someone would spawn here was if they were spawned here by a script. Um, Interestingly, though, if you click this little bubble here, this will actually force you. So let me show you something. I'm going to turn spawn on start off. So when I spawn, I should not spawn here because spawn on start is set to my world spawn here. But because I touch this bubble, that forces me to spawn right here. If I turn the bubble off, because I'm not spawn on start, I'm going to spawn over here. If you have multiple spawn on starts, you're going to spawn randomly. Um, and you can set whether or not this sets the position only. So this is basically the same thing as saying apply orientation. Um, so you can set whether or not it forces the rotation of the character when they're spawned here. And anytime a player is spawned in a particular gizmo, they will be subject to that gizmo's gravity and speed. By default, gravity is 9.81, speed's 4.5. But if I was to change these and spawn here, my speed's going to be really fast. But if I was to spawn on the other one, Mm, I think I spawned on this one still. Turn spawn on start off. There we go. Now I get my speed back because the other gizmo is set to the normal speeds. And that's it for the spawn gizmos. Um, I do apologize. I'm not going to be able to show you the environment gizmo, um, unfortunately. Um, but I can show you the particle trail effects. So again, we've got the play on start. Basically, does it trail 
when we start. Why'd you not trail just now? Oh, it is trailing, I think. It's just really small. Make everything bigger. Oh, something ain't right. I don't think it's actually trailing. I think that's... Yeah, that's my cursor trailing. It should trail, though. Hmm. What if I pull out a new one? Will it trail? Yeah, so there's a trail. And we're still trailing. Let's get rid of this one. It doesn't seem to be behaving properly. Okay, yeah, he's working okay now. All right, um, so you can set the length of your tail um, right here. Now he should be a little longer before he starts to disappear. We can set the width of the tail. Let's bring this down a little smaller maybe, like a point zero five. Yeah, he's a little thinner now. You can set the start color. So I could I could turn this to black. So it starts out black and then fades to blue. Of course you can set that in color too. There's some presets. You got a simple tail, it looks like this. Just kind of square. And you've got your tapered tail, it looks like this. Kind of comes off to a point at the end. And of course the ability to stop the preview. And that's that's it for the gizmo, um, or for the particle effect. One one uh one way this might be helpful. Uh so let, let's go ahead and let's move on to the uh dynamic light. Inside the dynamic light, you've got a couple of options here. Um whether or not this is a spotlight or a point light. So point would be basically light is emitting from the center in all directions. Spot would be light emitted from just this position, just from this angle. You can change the color of the light. If I was to make it black, essentially we don't have any light coming out. Um, but we could set it to all green, right? And we got green light coming out. We can set the intensity of the light, like how strong the light shows. We can set the fall off distance. When you're on a spot, when you're on spotlight, you can set like the fall off distance and the spread. Oh, fall off distance would be like how far away my spotlight is going to show. See, and then spread would be like how wide my spotlight would show. And then for point, you get the fall off in intensity, you just don't get the spread. Um, so again, we can bring fall off, and it kind of acts like spread a little bit. Um, and again, this isn't directional, um, so it's the light kind of shows up everywhere. All right, and that is it for the gizmos that you can use without a script. See you soon.